ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه واله وصحبه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد one of the greatest virtues that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees for the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that Allah jalla wa ala blesses them with offspring. He blesses them with children. He blesses them with boys and girls that the parent has this responsibility over to nurture them, to raise them into great examples of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Children, offspring, boys and girls that a parent has is a means for them as parents to enter Jannah and a means for the children to enter Jannah, a means for the inhabitants of paradise to increase, a means for the Ummah of Muhammad وسلم, to multiply. The Prophet said, إِذَا مَاتَ الْإِنسَانِ إِنْ قَطَعَ عَمَلَهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثَةٍ when a person passes away, all of the actions come to an end. They are cut. Except for three actions. He said, إِلَّا مِنْ صَدَقَةٍ جَارِيَةٍ أَوْ عِلْمًا يُنْتَفَعْ بِهِ أَوْ وَلَدٌ صَالِحٍ يَدْعُوا لَهُ Except for three actions. He says, a charity that is ongoing, knowledge that benefits, and a pious child that makes dua for them. And that's one of the virtues of having children. One of the virtues of having righteous children is that after a, after a parent passes away, after all of their deeds come to an end, there still may be an opportunity for his sins to be forgiven and his rank in Jannah to be increased. And that is, if Allah Jalla wa ala blesses the person to have a child that is righteous in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, children Allah refers to in the Qur'an as a zina, as something that is considered to be an adornment of this world. He says, Al-mal wa al-banoon, zinatul hayat al-dunya. That wealth and children and offspring are a zina, are an adornment of this dunya, an adornment of a life of this dunya. And there's children, offspring, is considered to be one of the greatest virtues that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows upon the slave in this dunya. They're not only a virtue, they're not only a blessing, but Islam sees them as a right, as an aman, as a trust that Allah Jalla wa ala has given to the slave of Allah Jalla wa ala. He says subhanahu wa ta'ala, إِنَّ Allah يَأْمُرَكُمْ or إِنَّ Allah يَأْمُرُكُمْ أَن تُعَدُّ الْأَمَنَاتِ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهَا Allah Jalla wa has commanded you to fulfill your trusts. To fulfill your trusts, he says subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, la takhoonu Allah wa al-Rasul, wa takhoonu amanatikum, wa antum ta'lamun. Don't ever be somebody that doesn't fulfill the trusts that Allah Jalla wa has given you. Rather fulfill them all. Fulfill the trusts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. Children is a great and mighty trust that Allah Jalla wa has given us. For every single person that sits here today and that is a parent or that hopes to become a parent, know that Allah Jalla wa has trusted you or will trust you one day when He decrees to give you children. It's a mighty trust in the sight of Allah Jalla wa ala. And this is why the Prophet Sallallahu said, Kullukum ra'in. Every one of you is a shepherd. Every one of you has to be somebody that looks after.
after and will be held accountable for certain people. وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْعُولٌ رَعِيَتِهِ And every one of you will be asked on the day of judgment. Will be held accountable about those people to whom Allah Jalla wa Ala has given you a right. Those people to whom you have a right over. Those people to whom you must fulfill your trusts. And then he says, وَالرَّجُلْ رَاعٍ فِي أَهْلِهِ وَهُوَ مَسْؤُولٌ عَنْ رَعِيَتِهِ And a man will be considered as somebody that has a right upon his entire family. He will be asked about every single one of them. A man will be asked about his wife. A man will be asked about his mother. A man will be asked about his sisters. A man will be asked about his children. On the day of judgment, this amana, this trust that Allah Jalla wa has given us as male slaves of Allah, will be asked about our family members. We'll be held accountable regarding our family members. We'll be asked about how we raise them up. How, what we taught them. In which ways do we protect them? What did we try to do in ensuring that they became followers of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Know, O oh brothers in Islam, that this trust, this right, is indeed a great right in the sight of Allah. Ponder and contemplate about this hadith. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the authority of Abu Huray radiallahu ta'ala an, سَنَّانِ الْمَوْلُودِ إِلَّا يُولُدْ الْفِطْرَةِ There is not a person that is born except that he is born upon the fitrah. What is the fitrah? The fitrah is he is born upon a natural inclination to worship Allah, a natural inclination to acknowledge the rights of Allah, a natural inclination to become from the inhabitants of paradise, to become from the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every single person that is born has this natural inclination. But then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there is not a single person except that he's born upon the fitrah. But then his father or his parents either guide them and help them towards that fitrah, or he misguides them towards something else. The parents either guide them and help them towards this natural inclination towards worshipping Allah, or they misguide them towards everyone else or something else. And this is why your brothers in Islam, or fathers in Islam, your children are a responsibility upon you. It's a trust upon you that Allah Jalla wa has given you. There are many parents across the world who are striving the utmost to have children. Some of them, Allah Jalla wa does not decree for them to have children. In the short term or in the long term. But for those of you that Allah Jalla wa has opened the door and allowed you to become parents, you have a right. And that is to raise your children up upon the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will discuss some of the steps that a person can do in order to establish his right, in order to be held free on Yom al Qiyamah in the second part of the khutbah, inshallah. تعالى وبارك الله تعالى فيكم وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه ومن والاه وبعد after understanding that children are an amanah a trust from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and understanding the great responsibility in ensuring that they are upright, that they are guided, that they are protected. And they are led towards a path in worshipping Allah and following the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One of the rights or one of the steps that a person, a father or a mother must ensure, must make sure that they hold on to and they exercise regularly is the right of dua is the right of asking Allah for their guidance continuously over and over again for this was the sunnah of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this was the sunnah of our father our father Ibrahim alayhi salam for how many a time did Allah mentioned in the Quran that he made dua for his children 
He made dua for Ismail. And he made dua for his dhurri as a whole, his children as a whole, his offspring as a whole. Rabbi ja'al hadal balada amina. Wajnubani wa baniya an na'qud al-aslam. Oh Allah jalla wa ala, make this house a place of worship, a place where there is security. And make my children those people who do not worship the idols of Allah. They don't worship the idols that people created. Rabbi ja'alni muqim as-salaq. وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِهِ رَبَّنَا وَتَقَبِّلْ دُعَاءِ Over and over again, Allah mentioned dua that He mentioned. Making dua for Himself and making dua for His children. The Prophet ﷺ said something very, very unique and important for every single parent. He said ﷺ, ثَلَاثٌ ثَلَاثُ دَعَوَاتْ مُسْتَجَابَاتْ لَا شَكَّ فِيهِنَّ There are three duas that are accepted. There is no doubt about it. There are three du'as that are accepted and there is no doubt about it at all. He mentioned sallallahu alayhi wa sallam da'watul madhloom, the du'a, the one that is oppressed. He mentioned sallallahu alayhi wa sallam da'watul musafir and the du'a of the one that is traveling. And then he mentioned sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa da'watul walid and the du'a of the parent. A du'a that is accepted and there is no doubt about it, he said. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is why the father and the mother must train their tongues in regularly praising and glorifying Allah and asking Allah to bless and honor their children. Asking Allah to guide their children. And this is why some of the scholars of Islam who explain this hadith, they say, when a person becomes upset or angered by his children, let him make dua for him rather than curse him. Let him make dua for him rather than cursing for often you find parents in situations of anger they insult their children they ask allah to send his wrath upon them this is a dua that is accepted this will be a dua that is accepted and thus train your tongues to regularly make dua for your children even in situations where they displease you make dua that allah gives them hidayah makes dua that allah jalla wa ala gives them he died. Guidance in this dunya and guidance in the akhir. From the rights that a father and a mother has for their children that they must take care of is the right to give them love. The right to show them love when they are young and when they reach an old age. Abu Hurairah writes that the Prophet he once picked up one of his grandchildren and he kissed them to whom a man called Akra bin Habis at Tamimi. He was sitting down and he said to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O Prophet of Allah, I have ten children and I've never kissed any one of them. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man la yurham la yurham. Whoever is not, is not merciful to others, he does not find mercy from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. From the ways to find a child that is obedient, to find a child that is respectful, to find a child that wants to fulfill the rights of their parents, is that a parent is merciful towards their children. A parent is merciful and shows love and affection towards their children. Abu Hurairah writes that the Prophet there was once upon the member and he was speaking towards the companions of the Prophet and he saw his grandchildren Hassan and Hussein walking upon the streets. So he left his member and he picked up his children and he was showing love and affection towards them. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa once lengthened the prostration to the extent that the Sahaba behind him thought that perhaps he fell asleep or perhaps something else happened. Due to the fact that he wanted to become merciful to those grandchildren, Hassan and Hussein, who mounted upon his back and he wanted them to enjoy themselves in that particular posture. Be merciful towards your children. And Allah Jalla wa Ala will be merciful towards you. Be merciful towards your children, and your children will be merciful towards you. From the rights that the child has upon the parent is that they deserve to be treated equally. It is possible that a person may love one child more than the other. Perhaps one is more dutiful towards his parents than the other. But from an outward perspective, the father and the mother must treat them all the same. Must treat them all the same. For jealousy 
is something that inhabits in the heart and that it grows and overcomes all forms of emotion such that the person will become an evil individual or act in an evil manner due to hasid, due to envy or jealousy that they find in their hearts. The Prophet said, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهُ وَعَدِلُوا بَيْنَ أَوْلَادِكُمْ Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be just and treat your children the same. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and treat your children the same. From the rights that a parent must have and a way a parent, a parent must act is that they must serve as a good example for their children. For the children, especially young boys, look up to their fathers and they want to take them as a role model. They want to be like their father. They want to do exactly what he does. And thus, the father must correct himself. If not for himself, then correct himself for his children. Correct himself for his children. The children will learn the evil characteristics of their father if he displays them amongst their children. The children will begin to smoke and take drugs if they find that their father smokes and takes drugs. The children will spend long time watching television if they find the father spending long time watching the television. The children will become disobedient towards his parents if he finds the father disobedient towards his own parents. The rewards for actions from the same category of the actions what goes around will come around. The children will behave exactly like how the father behaves. And from the characteristics a father must have or parents must have in order to preserve and protect their children is to be concerned about their dunya and their akhirah. Be concerned about their dunya and the akhirah. Find out what they study in their schools. Protect, protect them from sitting in assemblies where they invoke the name of other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or they participate in the assemblies or the, the assemblies of, of, of festivals of the kuffar. And this is the responsibility of every single parent. If you do send your children to state schools, then protect them from the Protect them from the shirk of the fate of the fate of the state schools. Protect them from the evil cause of the state schools. Cause that are contradicting the book of Allah, the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa And beyond that, it is upon the rights of the parents. It is upon the right upon the parents to ensure that just like how they go to school and they educate themselves, they must have something whereby they educate themselves in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. talks about how people they love deities besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But as for the believers, they love the deen of Allah Jalla wa ala. It's the right upon the parent to raise a generation that love Allah and that love his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And just look for madrasas that teach their children with love and affection. Teach them the Qur'an, teach them etiquettes of Islam, teach them stories of the prophets that came before. Make their role models, Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali, make their role models, prophets and messengers of Allah. And this is why the scholars of Islam used to recommend the parent to name their children after great examples of Islam, so that they may become like a Muhammad, or they become like an Ibrahim, or they may become like a Nuh, or a Musa or a Isa alayhi salatu wa salam. It's the right upon the parent, not just to send them to the madrasa, but to make sure the madrasa is teaching the children with love and affection. Make sure the madrasa doesn't become a thorn in their path towards worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make sure the madrasa is something that places the seeds of love of Allah jalla wa ala and the love of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the right of every single parent to ensure their children can read the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they have that desire, that need to want to follow the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No fathers in Islam or those who intend to become fathers that Allah jalla wa ala 
has placed with you a great amana, a great trust that you will be asked about on the Day of Judgment. You'll be asked about how you raise your children. You'll be asked about how you raise your sons and how you raise your daughters, how you try to protect them, or where you lax with them and allowed every fitna to come towards their way. No fathers in Islam, but in their pockets, in the pockets of your children, lies a device that can have with every single desire and every single doubt. A device that can call them towards every single possible haram. And that can bring to them every single doubt about Islam. This device is none other than the phone that they have in their pockets. And nowadays, alhamdulillah, there are many applications whereby the parent can install in their children's phones, which can protect them from these desires and protect them from these doubts. So it's pivotal, if not obligatory, upon the father, the father, the father to install these apps on their phones of their children and to protect them from every desire and doubt that the world will throw towards them. It's your role, O oh fathers in Islam. It's your role, O oh brothers in Islam, to protect your children. It's your role to ensure that they are walking upon a path of guidance. It's your role to ask and question them about their friends and to make sure they befriend only the righteous or children of righteous families. It's your role to go and ask their teachers in schools or their teachers in schools about what they're going to study and to perhaps take them out of certain classes or assemblies. This is your role as fathers. And if you do not fulfill these roles, know that you will be asked about it on the Day of Judgment and you'll be held accountable by Allah Jalla wa ala on Yawm al -Qiyam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of our children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise them up to become examples of the Ummah of Islam. May Allah jalla wa ala give them the path of Hidayah and protect them from all other paths of misguidance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make them from the inhabitants of paradise. May Allah jalla wa ala allow them to love and learn the Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow them to practice the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah jalla wa ala make from them leaders like Khalid bin Walid. Make from them leaders like Abu Bakr and Umar. Make for them leaders like the prophets and messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma a'iz al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allahumma a'idhin al-Shirk wa al-Mushrikin. Allahumma inna ka'afu wa tuhibbu al-Afwa fa'afu anna. Allahumma wa fana a'atila fi al-Dunya hasana. Wa fi al-Akhirati hasana. Wa qina adhar al-Nar. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Wa ala ala Muhammadin kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad. Wa ala ala Muhammadin kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majid. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi al-Fahim wa qimu wa sallam.